Change Day is coming up. Find out how you can get involved. Cambridge Lawn Bowls to attempt Guinness World Record. And more coverage from the concert by the lake. Kia ora and good evening. Welcome to Central News on TV Central for Tuesday the 24th of February. I'm Amanda Harper. In today's news, applications are now open for the 2015 New Zealand National Agricultural Field Day Sir Don Llewellyn Scholarship. Established in 2012, the scholarship is funded by the National Agricultural Field Day Society and is worth up to $22,000 for one year of graduate study at the University of Waikato. It's aimed at graduate students undertaking research in the agricultural sector. Previous winners' projects have focused on addressing issues currently facing the agricultural industry. The scholarship is open to domestic students enrolling at the University of Waikato to undertake research at a master's or doctoral level. For more information, visit the university website. Applications close March the 20th. International snowboarder and Waikato alumni Natalie Good has made an unscheduled trip back home to recover from a broken leg instead of training on the slopes in northern Japan. Her return home means that she will be able to pick up her 2014 Sir Edmund Hillary Medal in person. Each year the University of Waikato awards two Hillary Medals to top scholars, one for sport and the other for performing arts. Ms Good, who has completed a BMS LLB honours at the University of Waikato, was a gold medalist in the slope style at the last World Winter Universiade and was then one of three competitors to be awarded a Universiade scholarship, which she put towards international travel and training. She still hopes to qualify for the 2018 Winter Olympics. With community vision, sustainability and unique recreation at heart, a group of skateboarding enthusiasts are bringing a one-of-a-kind facility to Ōmokoroa. The Ōmokoroa Community Skate Group, in partnership with the Western Bay of Plenty District Council, is busy working to create an environmentally sustainable skate path for the community in what is a first for the region. It will be located on the corner of Western Avenue and Ōmokoroa Road. It's the first stage of a comprehensive development at the Ōmokoroa Sports Grounds. OGSG member Ben Bao says after years of community-wide talk of a skate facility, the concept of a skate path rose from the children of Ōmokoroa. The countdown is on for Kiwis to take part in what is set to be the biggest single day of action in New Zealand healthcare history. Change Day on March 11 is a movement designed for all healthcare professionals to press for change to improve the quality of healthcare in New Zealand. This will be the first time New Zealand has officially taken part in the global campaign but previous success in other countries suggests Change Day will be a day of mass healthcare improvement. The concept is simple. Kiwis get involved by finding something they can do to improve healthcare quality and pledge it on the Change Day website. And on March 11, every person actions their pledge, creating a mass movement of grassroots healthcare improvement. Now for our region's weather. Hamilton, your Wednesday outlook will be fine spells, afternoon showers and light winds, high of 26 and low of 12. Rest of the Waikato will be the same with fine spells and afternoon showers in some parts. Pairo, your high is 26, low of 14. Matamata, 24, low of 13. Te Aumotu, 26, low of 12. And Tokoroa, 24, low of 12. Over in the bay, Tauranga, fine spells with light winds, high of 26 and low of 16. For the rest of the Bay of Plenty, fine spells, isolated afternoon evening showers and light winds. Tupuki, high of 24 and low of 15. And for the marine forecast, west coast, northeast 15 knots dying out, high tide at 14pm. East coast, northwest 15 knots as well, moderate easterly swell easing on Thursday. Your high tide is at 20 past 1. Coming up, might Cambridge be able to break a Guinness World Record? Welcome back to Central News, I'm Amanda Harper. A team from the Central Bowling Club in Cambridge are coming together to take on a Guinness World Record. 
Alastair Carter reveals just how they will do this. Yeah, the world record is uh, for the longest marathon of long green balls game. Uh, it stands at 170 hours and three minutes at the moment, and it's held by an Australian bowling club since 2009. So, came, uh, Central Bowling Club Cambridge want to, to beat that record. And what motivated you to attempt this? The motivation was to, to raise funds for the Cancer Society really for life initially. But unfortunately we ran out of time to organise it, so I put it back to the 19th of April. Um, so I was want to beat the record. It's something that I enjoy doing and the Cancer Society is something that's close to my heart. Yep. And the fact that it was an Australian that holds the record, an Australian club. Well, that's, that's part of the motivation. <laughs> <laughs> Always is, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> so how will it be done? Give us the details. Yeah, it's a team of six players who will be playing throughout the 170 hours. As long as four players are on the green at one time and two are resting, they play for two hours, then off for an hour rest, then back on for two. So there won't be any long sleeps there? It's only going to be hour, one hour periods of rest? Every, every two hours it'll be one hour off two on throughout the whole period and the same six must start and finish. Yep, so you're aiming for 180 hours yep. to completely bowl them out. Yeah, that's right. We want to do a decent time. Yep. yep. So have you got any strategies in place of how you're going to stay awake? Probably keep talking to each other. <laughs> keep talking to each other, keep each other motivated to, to carry on. Yep. In 180 hours, how many days is that? Well, it's over at least a seven and a half day period we have to be. Wow, so you're looking at over a week of non-stop lawn bowling. Yeah, yeah. Won't you get a sore arm? Yeah, probably, <laughs> but we'll change arms. <laughs> change arms, right? <laughs> if we get so bad, we'll change arms and play with our left arm. Yeah. yeah. Now, when it comes to the official side of things, you have to have some witnesses. That's right. How many witnesses do you need? We need two witnesses for uh, four hours each throughout the whole period. So throughout the whole period, it's about 80 witnesses all in we need. Okay, so you, you've organised a team of witnesses to come and go? Not yet, we don't have a full team yet, so we're still on the lookout for more witnesses. Yeah. And the witnesses don't have to be bowlers, they can be the general public. It's anybody? Yeah. 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 Well, hopefully you'll be able to find enough witnesses. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Especially for those early morning shifts. Early morning and through the night are the difficult ones to cover. <laughs> Now, 180 hours of non-stop lawn bowling. Yeah. Have you started any training? Are you going for runs? Are you changing your diet or anything like that? No, we haven't. We're just going to smash right into it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just going to get into it and yeah. see how it goes? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm getting motivated. <laughs> now, can people come and watch? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, we want people to come and watch us because that's that's the support that we need, the encouragement yeah. that we need to carry on yeah. and smash this record. Yeah. yeah. And what about the weather as well? Well, hopefully the weather will be good to us. Uh, we do know that it's going to be a bit cooler, which is good as well. Yeah. But if it does rain, we just carry on, put a bit of weather gear on, umbrellas, whatever it takes. We'll just carry on playing. Okay. Now, just to finish it off, how can people donate to this cause? Yeah. I've got a Facebook um, page set up, yep. um, which you can contact us on, and that's the Cambridge Bowling Record Attempt Okay. Um, Facebook page. And also we've got a bank account from the Cancer Society on that page. To donate, support or volunteer as a witness, visit their Facebook page. Last night, Ronnie Albert told us about the fundraiser for Waikato Women's Welfare and tonight she carries on her story of why her organisation wants to help the men involved with domestic violence, not just the victims. We realised that we've over, um, we'd outgrown our organisation. We'd been there 29 years and often our, um, our work would be on the direction of the family, so we'd normally need to cut through whatever was fast to go straight to the top, so it, it often left out our national organisation. Um, and, and there was no offence to them yes. uh, meant, but um, we needed to move as, at the speed of our families. Okay, yeah. and now one of the big differences for Waikato Women's Refuge is that you offer support to men yes. in these situations. Tell me a little bit yes. about that. 
Um, we've always in some way worked with our men uh, when they wanted to engage. Um, we just haven't had the resource in the past of people to be able to do that. And last year we were, we were um, able to hire a, or employ a male advocate. And so we have females or experienced females that have worked in, our, in this area for a number of years and our male advocate that will go out and work with the with the males basically so we can do that together but it's important that we get a male perspective yeah. um, you know leading our men and someone who's a role model as well yeah. Yeah. now these men that are getting the help they are men that are in violent relationships and yes. they want to change their ways is that right yes yeah that's the only um, way that we will work with our men they need to agree to want to walk alongside of us and to help you know it's really hard to break behaviours and mm. tactics if you're used to a certain way of being, a certain way of um, acting and if you want to change that so you need a lot of help sometimes from other people who have experienced that or um, when, you're, when you're going on a different path um, it's be able to um, understand how to break that, you know, your beliefs, um, the values, what does that change and, and maybe some of the things you need to turn around and, and do it differently. Mm. But they have to recognise that first. Yeah. Mm. Would you say it's been successful so far? Um, I believe it has for the men that really truly want to make a change. Yeah. And many people do. They just it gets tiring, you know. So you're you're constantly having to watch yourself 24/7 basically. If you're used to um, punishing and threatening and getting what you want by using a particular behaviour or tactic with someone then to turn that around there was a lot of power there mm. so it makes it really hard why would you want to give it up yeah. if you get all what you want by using intimidation and threats and yeah power like that but if they're wanting to keep their families yeah. together yeah it's important then that you do break that pattern otherwise you will lose your family yeah. and it's just due to your um yeah your responsibility okay so how many calls do you receive a year in relation to domestic violence. Do you respond to every single one? We try to respond to every single one. Like, um, probably nine years ago, we were able to be built um, um, extensively to Puni Kōkiri funded us at the time. Um, and we grew from seven workers, um, employed workers, to 42. Um, and so we are the largest refuge in New Zealand. Um, that work 24-7 alongside of the police with the police radio phone. Um, our numbers that we deal with, we deal with up to, at the moment, we last week, uh, Waitangi Day, um, we had 196 cases in Hamilton that we needed to visit over a period of two weeks. Wow. So, so alongside of the police, the police will have about 100, 120 to 140 a week. Of those cases, we will probably visit 80 to 100. Kia ora Ronnie, keep up the good mahi. Stay with us for more stories from the Waikato and Bay of Plenty. Welcome back. Up next, Maureen from the Waikato Family Centre talks about the services that they offer for young mothers. Well, as simple as we can make it, um, usually the mother or relative ring and I get them to come on in as soon as possible. Within a few days, if I can possibly make it, I do tell them it will be a short time at first, but with a view to having mum and baby in here for a few hours to see the feed, to see if we can put baby to sleep and therefore see the problem in ourselves, and then show the mother what she can do to help baby therefore help herself. How many families do you help each year? Oh, over 900 a year. How are you funded? Uh, well, we'd have a small amount from, well, probably half from DHB, then we have the Ministry of Social Development, another for our teenage mums, and then we go to all the charities for the Waikato, who have been incredible, and then we are always asking for donations here because I don't like to charge the mothers because this is a hard time going from two incomes to one. So therefore, we're always trying to find ways of making money. Laura, you're helping to organise a family centre fundraiser along with some other mums. Why have you decided to do that? I think most mothers who've come through the family centre, while whether or not they've donated um, with money, 
feel like they want to give back. Um, the Family Centre helps so many families and often just giving a bit of money doesn't feel like enough. There's a, so we um, have got together and we're organising a fundraiser for 22 February just to kind of try and bring more money into the Family Centre to help more families like our own that were troubled. And you're doing it in the form of a Waikato buggy run. Tell me about that. We have because what mother doesn't want to get back in shape a little <laughs> bit more. So yes, so we're on the 22nd of February meeting down at Innes Common and from there there will be a buggy run going around Hamilton Lake and so fingers crossed for nice weather but it's a nice walk anyway. And while people are doing the walk, if they don't want to walk, there's a family day going on with some games, music, raffles, quick fire raffles, there's stalls with produce and cakes, there'll be a coffee stall, very important, there'll be drinks, there'll be, you know, mm. just stuff going on so that everyone can have a good family, family fun day. Does it cost to do the buggy run? What we're doing is rather than charging a flat rate is we've asked that uh, the mothers or the grandmothers or the fathers or whoever wants to do the buggy run just gets sponsorship from their family and friends so that you know in these tough mm. times rather than putting out X dollars yourself you can go to your families, friends, neighbours and say can you sponsor me five, mm. ten, twenty oh. more dollars to, to walk around the lake with my little one or with my buggy and um, and hopefully, you know, that's a bit, a bit, a bit easier of a, of a task for people to do that, I think. And do people need to register? We prefer that people do register. It's on the website waikatobuggyrun.nz. However, we will be accepting registrations on the day. No one's going to be turned away. Maureen, does the Waikato Family Centre help anyone or do they have to have specific criteria? Not, not at all. Any mother with a baby, roughly 12 months, um, can come. We have mothers, um, pregnant mothers, because if they have had postnatal depression, if they've had a tough time in their last pregnancy, um, they like to just make themselves known to us. If you would like to learn more, visit their website, waikatofamilycentre.co.nz. Over the weekend, the TV Central crew were filming on location at the concert by the lake. Here's a special feature of what went down. Hi, my name's Brian Rowley. Um, I've been playing guitar for about roughly 10, 15 years. Um, my involvement with this concert has been really huge. Um, well, not that huge. I play guitar like all the rest of the musicians here. Um, it's really cool to be involved in such a cool project. Um, Rotary is a great organisation. Um, charity, playing for charities is something that I really enjoy. So it's, um, it's been awesome being out here today and coming to play to the
Amy McDowell, I am a singer-songwriter and I'm here today performing in Matter Matter on this beautiful lake for the Rotary Club. Um, it's been a really good day, we've had a bit of rain but I think all of us have been very professional and really got through it. I hope that everyone that attended had a really great day and enjoyed some of the new songs. There's always something going on in Matamata. Now that's us for tonight. If you would like to, you can like us on Facebook, search centralnews.tv, or if you think you may have a story lead for me, email news at tvcentral.co.nz. We would love to hear from you. I'll be back again tomorrow night with more stories from the Waikato and the Bay of Plenty. I'm Amanda Harper. Have a good night. Paul Marie. This has been an Alpha Media production, a division of Television Media Group. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.